I have this theory that there's two types of photography. There's creating moments and capturing moments. I'm creating moments. The ones that are my favorite are ambiguous. I like to have the person fill in the blanks. I want to show you one thing. I like that you can see yourself in the plexiglass. You can use it as a mirror to reflect on yourself. So that's another thing. Somehow we made an exit wound look pretty. <laughs> yeah, just smoke, Charlie. We, yeah, no, just out of the way. Yeah, there you go. And smoke up here. There's a real emptiness to Los Angeles. It's kind of a tragic city. You can go to areas that are so famous and known, and then you go there, you, it hits 2 a.m. I can shoot in these locations and have no one around and shoot between these hours where you just get these incredible, you kind of get this emptiness, surreal emptiness. It did happen that most of the series took place, all of it, in Los Angeles, but a lot of the photos were based on New York crime scenes and various things. So this is basically, we're setting up the shot and I have a prosthetics team, special effects makeup people. It's a suicide, slit wrist, a correctly slit wrist. I was at a bookstore in Los Angeles, leafing through books, art books, and then I just opened up the next book on the thing, and it was a book of crime scene photographs. I'm noticing the room, the wallpaper, the furniture, what the people are wearing. All the images hit me at once. I was like, oh my God. I was just completely unaffected by it. Like, I didn't even notice the crimes. I was so fascinated with the details. I like distractions. I like take these reference photos and then kind of take it from there. The fact that it is based on the story and nobody really knows the backstory is the magic of most of the pictures. As I got into the series, I kept learning more and more about these crime scene photographers. A lot of these guys at the turn of the century, you know, or even 40s, 50s, they, they were artists and funding their art by being crime scene photographers. So these, these early crime scene photographs were very artistic. If we get you over there. Oh, where's that picture? Still in the car. All right, so where do you want me exactly? Your head there by the lob. Okay. Or actually kind of in there. Okay. Like in that little area. It starts with crazy research and finding photos and then organizing the photos. 
whatever I can get my hands on, I get. I got a tour, an unexpected tour of the coroner's office, which I'll never forget. I looked to my right, and there was a girl completely wrapped in a blue sheet, except for her feet. And um, she had these, these, this really, she had this bright colored red toenail polish on, and it looked so perfectly manicured. I was just staring at that, and that t stuck with me more than anything. The nail polish had some, it had a personality attached to it. painted because one girl that I just did who's got that foot like the cut off foot her nails are like a reddish pink okay but the one Laura who is getting hung what about silver silver's good silver silver okay. with sparkles Let her out. All right, that's it right there perfect okay don't move okay For me, the photos I normally style all have that in element of innocence and a, definitely a strong sexuality. I think there are just those elements to allow you to look at it a little closer. I think that in the end, everything has a story that I tell or has an element. If you look close, there's something in it more than just the photo. My ultimate fascination is seeing people look at the work and analyzing it and coming up usually with something totally different than what I was aiming for. But I don't say anything because it's, they're the ones that make it art. <laughs>